Hey guys, Joe Tech here. Today we're going to discuss how to speed up your computer. Now, majority of people, they only have one physical hard drive in the computer and it should be rather large, either, you know, 2 terabytes or bigger, maybe 500 gig, terabyte, whatever. But today we're going to be discussing uh, um, we're going to be using a 2 terabyte hard drive for our demonstration purposes. Reason for that is that uh, the majority of people have 2 terabytes or larger usually in their machine as their default hard drive and they only have one. So if you have multiple drives, uh, this, um, I guess, um, I guess this procedure will work as well. If you have a storage drive, uh, that part of the drive will be extremely fast. So this technique is something that I, I wrote an article about a long time ago, and uh, I think it needs to be put in a video. So I want to be able to share this. This will pretty much make your if <laughs> make your machine pretty much rock and roll really quick. It should boot up. Well, not should. It will boot up much faster, and it'll always be high performance. This is like almost like a poor man solid state, um, I guess, uh, virtually, you know, virtually making a, uh, uh, I guess, a uh, solid state drive out of mechanical. But, you know, in, in theory, that's not the case. But we're going to try to make the performance. I mean, it's not going to be as fast as a solid state drive because you won't be able to achieve 400 or 500 megs a second unless you had multiple drives like in RAID. Then that would possibly happen. You could probably achieve... 400 megs a second but again you need to be in raid zero in order to achieve that uh, with multiple drives so um, at that point it, it, I mean it may not be cost effective for you so uh, let's without further further ado we have or I have a um, 500 I'm sorry a two terabyte hard drive in the machine so Seagate and one of the programs that I happen to like a lot and I and I need for to do it with this particular instance. I mean, there's other tech, uh, hard drive tech uh, programs out there, but I need this one because it gives us a performance curve. And with the performance curve, it is required to determine which is the fastest part of the hard drive. Um, so that said, this is an old program. It is, uh, this is version 3.0.4.0. And uh, it's not compatible with Windows 7. But how do you get it to work? So you would have to, after the program is, is installed, you right-click it, go to Properties, go to Compatibility, and check off Windows XP Service Pack 3. It'll work perfectly fine after that, which is great because we need it for this, and you'll need it for when you want to do it on your machine. Now, if you already have a, an operating system installed on your machine, don't worry. You can still do this. It, um, you just need to find out how much space is used on it and adjust accordingly. Um, because you want to be able to upgrade, you know, down the line if you want to open up the drive a little bit more, if you need a little bit more space and, and lack performance. So let's, let's scroll down here and select the Seagate drive. There's nothing on this drive. This is actually blank. I did have data on it, um, but I, for, for this uh, demonstration, I wanted to make it completely zero. Uh, so there's nothing on it at all. So we're going to do a quick bench on this, and this will give us the performance curve of the, of the hard drive. The larger the drive... Usually, the better the performance. In, in other words, the performance curve. So if you have a 2 terabyte drive like this, the, the, the highest performance portion of it will be probably between uh, 0 and maybe 300 gig. And the drive would freaking fly <laughs> if you set a partition for 300 gig. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm... And anything bigger than that will be, you know, the, the, the window would be larger. So if you have a 4 terabyte drive, obviously the performance uh, window would be larger. So anyway, this 2 terabyte, you see 0 here, and it goes all the way over to 2 terabytes on the right. So the sl if you filled up this drive, it would be about 100 megs a second. And then if you, didn't con if you, if you partitioned it, say, um, let's say, so this is 200 gig. Now, most people don't need more than 200 gig for the boot drive so you want your machine to run pretty you know pretty quick so if we set the partition for 200 gig and then remain set up the remainder as your data drive that would work perfect so we can actually make a 200 gig drive and that's probably way too big because in most operating systems because most people use a solid state drive and they use a 256 gig drive or a 500 gig drive rather whichever and th and there's plenty you have way overkill in terms of extra space so what you can do is if you want if you notice a 200 gig we're getting 
just about actually a 200 gig we're getting 220 megabytes a second which is actually pretty darn good for a mechanical drive but wouldn't you like to get that all the time so if you partition the drive at 200 gig then you would get 220 megabytes a second all the time so we're going to right click my computer go to manage go to disk management i have so many drives in this machine so we're going to scroll down to the two terabyte drive that's not allocated and we want a new simple volume and we want to change this to 200 gig. Hit next. Make it drive G. That is fine. We'll call this boot if you wanted to. I mean, we're just showing you. So now I got the first part of the drive. So a 200 gig, this will boot. Now, what you can do, now say 200 gig is too much or too little. Let's just, before we allocate the other half, let me just move this stuff over. So we could have multiple things on the screen at once, which is beautiful. All right. So now, say this is not big enough. Okay. You say, okay, I want to, you know, at 400 gig, it's still 200 megabytes a second, which is pretty darn good. So let's, let's extend this to 400. So we increase this by another 200. I'm going to show you. This, this is the reason why I'm doing this. Right, next. So now we make it 400 gig or approximately. Then we make a partition here. We make this one. We we'll call this one data. Now we have a data drive. Now technically, your 400 gig. This is way too big. I mean, it'll work. You'll get a nice performance out of it and stuff. But it's actually too big. So what we want, what we want to do is we want to shrink this, and we want to shrink it down to 195. So now you have unallocated about 190 gig for future expansion all right so in other words beyond you're not going to need more than 400 gig on a, on a boot drive that's ridiculous i don't know how what you're going to be installing on your on your uh you know c drive but holy mackerel you shouldn't put any data on it everything should be relocated to a different drive letter uh, or even another physical drive um for safe for safekeeping nothing ever should be you know just the operating system so now in theory and in actuality, well, not in theory, this machine, if there was an operating system on this, would fly because we're specifically pointing it to only 200 gig. Unfortunately, I can't show you the performance because it's not an array configuration. It's a single drive, so it'll always be the same performance curve, but it works very, very well. So if I had, if I showed you the article, which will be linked in the description below, that if you had a RAID config, say you used the Intel Matrix RAID, um, and you set up the same thing, you had a, you have two two drives in RAID zero, and you went into the software and said, okay, make it 400 gig, and then shrunk it down to 200, and then it would it it would simulate that that was one physical drive. Then the thing would then you would see the performance line it would be going straight across. Uh, versus a performance curve. So this is how you can determine uh, how, how, like where you need to go in terms of your drive. So for argument's sake, so now if you check your drive and you, 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 know, you went into my computer, you went to your drive C, and you said, okay, I have 85 gig being used, so then you want to make it, you know, if you were using a 2 terabyte drive and 85 gig is what you use, then you would make it like, like I said, like 300 gig maybe, and then... Um, and then and then shrink it down, w and then make that small little partition there for future upgrades right here. Like there's 190, which is in other words. So if you filled up 200 gig, you would you wouldn't even feel the performance hit because it's always going to be 220 megabytes a second or in that realm between 220 and 200. I mean, come on, that's like that's like it's like you already had the performance. Now you're just unlocking it. So now you have the ability to actually speed up the machine without any special software, without anything. It's just by changing um, the partition of the drive, and that'll it's called short stroking, and uh, it's very very um, common. Well, I'm not sure if anybody's done it yet, but it's something that I've wrote about a long time ago, and actually speeds up the drive. So imagine if you have uh, three drives in RAID zero, which is probably the maximum I would go, and then you did that, you crossed, you crossed uh, a. I mean, RAID 0, there's no uh, redundancy. So if one drive fails, you lose everything. However, if you're interested in just in performance and you don't care, 
then this would be perfect for you. So if you had like say three two terabyte drives, then you would probably take you'll be only taking a sliver of each drive. For um, in other words, you're not going to take. I mean, I guess you could. You could make a 600 gig partition, and it would still be 220 megs a second, megabytes a second across all um, all three drives, and it'll be flying. That'll even be faster. But you have to do that. But that's what you could do. So this is how you make your machine really, really, really fast with the current hardware that you have in the drive, and uh, you won't. Um, some machines. Actually, Windows 10 machines, uh, you may not be able to do this with because you have a limitation of seven logical drives on the machine. In other words, um, you'll probably see, uh, let me scroll up to my other one. You have a 100 meg partition here because this is Windows 7. So you have a 100 meg partition here, and then you'll have... A 450, another 450, probably the physical drive. If, depending if you have a, uh, if it's a, if it's a, if you install the operating system yourself, then you could most likely do it. If it's a pre-bought machine like an HP or or a um, or a, any or Dell that came with Windows 10 on it, you could shrink it down, but you won't be able to create another um, another partition like that data one that that I made here. You can probably leave. A section of it unallocated and leave growth for the boot drive but you won't be able to create like in other words this will be um this wouldn't be here so in other words you can probably do this but you wouldn't be able to create another drive you could only make this and that would be it and then it wouldn't really matter because you'll have the performance but um that's if you wanted to do that but um anyway i hope this video helps you um I will link uh, some other technical information. I do have a, a video already on my channel that actually shows this in, in using RAID configuration a long time ago. So it's been this is that's when I pretty much wrote the article, and uh, and that's pretty much it. You did see other drives here. I'll, I'll you know I'll run it just for for craps and hahas for you. This is a Samsung uh, 500 gig SSD. You want to see the performance of that? I'm sure you're curious. So I'll, I'll run that for you. Um, it's uh, solid state is is uh, you know just that it's solid state. There's no moving parts. There's nothing. You'll have 100% performance. There are it should go straight across, but there since the machine is working and I am writing right now to the drive, so there will be some sort of uh, zigzag of uh, performance on uh, the outcome of this, as you see. Um, however, you can kind of just get a gist of it about 450 megabytes a second um pretty you know through and through it, it's there's no really performance curve as you can see there's a more or less a straight line going across the top it doesn't really dip per se so um and that's pretty much what a solid state drive does uh, so anyway thank you for watching and um please subscribe thank you take care <laughs>